Press check. Hi. Uh, first of all, I'm really glad to be here, uh, second time in a row, and I um, really appreciate that you are here. <laughs> Maybe it's really hard after lunch. Uh, so uh, I want to speak today a little bit about the ATM security, about how exactly hackers can break into your ATMs, uh, bypass protection mechanisms, and uh, extract uh, all money from the ATMs. Uh, my name is Timur Yunusov, and uh, I started to work at Positive Technologies from 2009, uh, and I'm still there. Then uh, in 2012, I started to work deeply about the banking security systems like penetration tests of online bankings, mobile bankings, and so on. And uh, I'm also a big fan of Nulcon. And uh, for the last year, I started to make uh, security assessment projects uh, of the ATMs during uh, which we worked with more than 10 different ATMs, with different security software, different uh, ATM vendors, and so on and so on. And uh, as we realized, maybe the main problem of the security of the ATM is that uh, neither vendor, ATM vendors of software, hardware, neither banks really do not realize their security landscape. They do not realize, uh, they do not know their uh, threat models. They do not know how exactly hackers can break into their ATMs. Uh, that's why I'm here and try to, uh, to send a message. So uh, here is our seven scenes list and uh, this it's not uh, paperwork, it's uh, real, really worked attacks that we uh, realized uh, during last year on the different ATMs. And uh, all these uh, attacks, we would like to always split to three levels. Like operation system level of uh, operation system vulnerabilities, other software vulnerabilities like uh, kiosk mode bypass belongs to this level. Next, of course, network attacks, and finally, hardware attacks. Uh, not only black box, but all that belongs to hardware, like uh, HD encryption vulnerability, like uh, BIOS passwords, and so on. And uh, if I mentioned the word black box, I would like to make a definition, because from one group, people, group of people to another group of people, there are a little bit uh, difference between these uh, definitions. Uh, in this speech, black box mean the attacks when uh, hacker do not interact with the operation system. You see on the slide, uh, when uh, somebody plug in uh, Raspberry Pi to the ATM, and if he or she plug in the Raspberry to the computer, for example, to emulate network card, to emulate keyboard, uh, it will not be a black box, but if he, if he or she will plug in the device to the dispenser, it will be. And uh, with this definition, the next thought is black box is dead. Uh, maybe with some uh, small details. First of all, of course, black box is almost dead because we have still a lot of, really a lot of, ATMs without uh, proper encryption, with old firmware and so on and so on, without uh, some external devices. And the next uh, point that the black box, of course, is that for the security researchers, because uh, it's uh, pretty simple. If the ATM have a strong and vulnerable encryption between uh, the operation system and the dispenser, then the black box is not possible. And if it doesn't, then black box is possible. It's easy. Uh, meanwhile, let's talk about our seven scenes, and we start from the kiosk mode bypass. As you may know, uh, kiosk mode is some specific mode of operation system when a user limited to make some actions to call like Explorer, Internet Explorer, calling some functions. Uh, sometimes he limited to make uh, interact uh, during keyboard or mouse and all he have is also uh, is only touch screen 
uh, of course, in our case, when the hacker have access to the cabinet area, he can plug in uh, his own keyboard, his own mouse. Uh, he can uh, simply send computer to shut down. And that's why the first and the easiest case is to call a safe mode by during pressing F8 uh, and then booting from the safe mode with command line, get the command line, <laughs> obviously. Uh, next thing is that in uh, safe mode, the most of services are disabled. Uh, some of security services are also disabled and it's really easy to bypass all the kiosk stuff. Uh, that's why at some point, uh, of course, 18 vendors disabled uh, access to the safe mode. But as you see, there are really a lot of uh, options and uh, some of them uh, can be accessed like uh, directory service restore, restore mode. And in the case when the, all this window is disabled by pressing F8, you can simply uh, plug out the, the electricity of the ATM, then plug in, uh, start the computer and you will get a message of the uh, some unsuccessful restarting and uh, still can get access to the safe mode. Uh, meanwhile, the easiest way to bypass the kiosks, as you all may know, is a uh, hotkeys of uh, operation system. And we still meet uh, an ATMs which allows to use WinR uh, to simply call uh, any command, of course, but uh, it's not so popular, ATM model, m models, uh, and uh, if you don't have WinR, you can use a lot of other combinations like Alt plus, F1 of 12, Shift five times, press to call uh, sticky keys mode. Of course, uh, it will help only at Windows 7 because only at Windows 7 you will get the help uh, icon. And uh, here is a list of uh, all Windows uh, Win Plus uh, hotkeys. Uh, next, if you don't see, uh, by, wh wh while you're pressing F1, if you don't see the help window, it doesn't mean that uh, it, doesn't, it didn't appear. Because sometimes the main window use attribute like always on top, which protect, which hiding all background stuff. And uh, as you see here, uh, with this window, first I call help window, then uh, blindly uh, pressed uh, Internet Explorer and then called Internet Explorer. And it's obviously not a great security. Uh, all these uh, measures, measures like disabling mouse icon, like uh, use always on top, it's uh, like security through obscurity, it's not a uh, great idea. <clears throat> Next, <laughs> you all see these fun pictures of uh, ATM uh, activation window uh, in the ATM, it's like, haha, uh, <laughs> how funny is that? But uh, is really it's really piece of cake because this window also will get you uh, will give you access to the help menu and uh, but if you don't want to uh, wait until this window appears you can use your own uh, plug and play device like uh, USB network card uh, and as you see uh, if you plug in your own USB network card in default default Windows configuration Windows 7 you will get this uh, uh, very useful window to choosing a uh, new network type and uh, really help uh, link in the bottom, like help hacker to bypass and extract all money from the ATMs. Uh, and uh, frankly, that's all. Because all you have to in 99% uh, to extract money from the ATM is to bypass kiosk. That's all. Uh, <laughs> so, how exactly? Uh, next, uh, after bypassing the kiosk, we have to uh, escalate our privileges. We have to bypass some file system restrictions. We have to by bypass some uh, local security policy policies of Windows. We have to bypass some user uh, limitations. And here is an uh, interesting table. Uh, what we have had to have to extract money from the ATM. 
If you have, of course, arbitrary co comment execution, you can send simple comment to XFS API, like uh, give me all money. <laughs> it's pretty easy. Uh, if you have limited comment to execute, you in that 99%, you can escalate your privileges, maybe to the system, maybe to the administrator, maybe to uh, only that privileges that, that will be enough to extract money. Uh, and finally, even you only have access to modify some specific files or some specific records in the registry, you, uh, you still can get access to the money. Uh, and what is really scary here is that all you need sometimes is only read some specific files and you also will get access to the money. That's scary. Uh, at some point, ATM vendors realized that the antivirus on the ATM is <laughs> not a good idea uh, and they changed them to the application control softwares like McAfee Solid Core, which recommended by the NCR, like Windows App Locker. <clears throat> and uh, of course, there are a lot of works how to bypass the App Locker, like this uh, cheat sheet, uh, really interesting white paper, how to bypass McAfee Solid Core. And uh, during our work, uh, works. Of course, we found our own <laughs> zero days, like uh, the first one uh, already published, and uh, we worked with uh, six total uh, application control tools uh, and found five different zero days, like, of course, local based uh, privilege escalation, uh, network based privilege escalations, <laughs> and really interesting, even logical based privilege escalation. Uh, Stay tuned, uh, in next few weeks and months, we will uh, publish all these uh, 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 security bulletins after the vendors will be patched. Uh, of course, not only about the zero days, uh, it's mostly about the wrong configuration and wrong white listening because uh, almost all application security, uh, application control tools uh, works uh, and disables all predefined softwares like Internet Explorer with Stack Overflow, with Stack Overflows, a lot of Stack Overflows like RunDL32, which uh, can give you access to load external DLL and execute in memory. Like PowerShell, <laughs> you know the PowerShell is maybe the main uh, tool of the hacker, uh, like Java, Java uh, that also give you access to execute uh, comments in memory and so on. Uh, it also used to bypass all these restrictions and execute money. <laughs> That's why the main idea here that you have to control your application control because uh, look for the security updates, look for the uh, configuration list, look for the whitelist and remove from the whitelist maybe 80% or 90% of uh, rules. Next about the network. Uh, as you may know, there are a lot of protection mechanisms of the uh, ATM communication uh, via the network. First of all, of course, it's a VPN. Software, hardware, VPN, no matter. Uh, it will protect you, your operation system services, incoming, outcoming requests. It will protect your software, other software services. It will protect your processing interaction. With interaction with the processing and will protect uh, your uh, customer's track to data. Next, uh, there is a TLS. It's like an application level uh, encryption. It will only protect, of course, your processing interaction uh, from the spoofing of requests and will protect your track to data. data. And uh, finally, they have uh, message authentication codes. Uh, they only protect uh, the processing interaction from the spoofing. They will not protect your track to data and they still uh, could be stolen uh, by the hackers. And in the end, you should not forget about the firewall because uh, imagine the case when the hackers break into bank network, then breaks into processing subnetwork and uh, for example if your ATM networks if your ATMs have 
Windows XP uh, with VPN, which terminated into this processing network with unpatched maybe MS0867. For example, then uh, the hackers can infect the whole network, like maybe that story that uh, becomes in Thailand or Taiwan uh, last year, I don't know. Uh, then, how to disable all these measures? Uh, of course, there are a lot of works how to brute force VPN pre-shared keys, uh, make an attacks on VPNs, and so on and so on. But at the first project of ATM security assessments, in first 15 minutes, we found <laughs> an interesting case how to disable VPN in fifth, in fifth second, in five seconds. Uh, of course, with uh, physical access to the ATM, but it's really interesting. Uh, then, as I mentioned before, uh, for disabling TLS or message codes or modificate other configurations, all you have to is to uh, modify files or registry records. Uh, last year, I presented here an interesting presentation about uh, vulnerabilities in home 3G routers and modems. And imagine uh, my surprise when we realized that the same vulns uh, are on the, even in the industrial 3G modems that used in the uh, ATMs a lot like authentication bypasses, remote code executions, and so on and so on. And all you have to is to uh, connect the 3G modem to your own uh, fake base station, uh, get access to port 80, then brute force the password maybe somehow, maybe use default password, maybe uh, use some uh, authentication bypass techniques, and uh, simply disable the VPN. <laughs> What's Embarrassing is that uh, a lot of vendors uh, use by default their own some proprietary VPNs, VPN protocols, and uh, really who knows how exactly they work, I don't know. And it's uh, not a good idea to make this, uh, to make this uh, by default, of course. Uh, now, device management. I started with uh, a message that, uh, first of all, in the main cases, in the most cases, you have to plug in your own keyboard or your own mouse. But of course, hackers will not plug in the keyboard or mouse. They will make a programmable device like Tinsy that emulates keyboard that will uh, bypass uh, all these uh, kiosk restrictions remotely with some uh, predefined instructions. Then, of course, network card uh, mentioned the case. And uh, next thing about the network card is that uh, sometimes plug in the new network card will disable your default uh, firewall rules for the default network and will disable your VPN uh, connection on, also from the default network. And of course, uh, USB drive, because at some point we need to deliver our own executable payload somehow to the ATM, and that's why uh, in most time we will need to uh, USB drive, because nobody will enter 80 kilobytes by hands. Uh, booting process. Uh, booting process is really the easiest way to bypass all security measures because, <laughs> of course, if your ATM do not have a BIOS password, then hacker can load from his own external device and that's all. Uh, next thing is that uh, there are a lot of possibilities to uh, bypass this boot priority of BIOS and load uh, like from the network, for example. Uh, safe mode I mentioned, uh, physical access, of course. <laughs> if, you're, if you do not have an encryption of hard drive, then all hackers have to is to plug in the HDD, plug out the HDD, plug into his own device, or write uh, all files, uh, disable the services, uh, that's all. Uh, the main story of last maybe 10 or 20 years is about passwords, of course, and ATMs, uh, <laughs> ATM protection is also about passwords sometimes, 
because uh, if you could, if the hacker could give could give access to one ATM, escalate privileges to administrator, extract with some firmware uh, BIOS password, and uh, the password will will be the same on the whole ATM network, or maybe some predictable like on this screen, uh, all changes is only numbers. Uh, then the whole network will be infected in a couple of days, maybe. And you should not forget about the bootkit. As you may know, bootkit is a special malware that stores in boot sector. Uh, it's really hard to find, it's really hard to delete, and they may uh, steal your track to data from the ATM maybe for years. Uh, and finally, logical vulnerabilities, uh, <laughs> the most interesting part, uh, in my opinion, uh, about first of all, like uh, a lot of security tools runs not as a services, but from the outer run or from the registry. That's why a hacker have a small window, maybe one or two seconds, to press uh, his own hotkeys and call uh, windows that he want to. Next, uh, we found <laughs> really interesting logical zero day in uh, application security application tool about uh, this case. This tool have uh, execution timeout, maybe like 30 seconds, uh, in which if the execution, is exo execution timeout is exhausted, then uh, the application had to run the file without uh, hash checking. That's why if you if we run two files at the same time, uh, first a really long file with uh, which hash cal calculation uh, will took more than 30 seconds, and uh, then the the second file like exploit uh, will be started in this in that 30 seconds. Uh, and uh, Control C uh, <laughs> also interesting hotkey because. <laughs> We met even this, uh, like uh, start applications, start bad files, which uh, after pressing Control C, do not close the main window, but give you uh, di direct access to command line. <laughs> That's all. Uh, and in this case about the VPN disabling in five seconds, uh, all we had to do is to press Control Alt Del, and this funny window appears. Uh, which uh, had a menu like uh, disable VPN without any prompts of administrator passwords, without any at all. Uh, file system of Windows, as you may know, Windows have dozens and dozens of uh, file system access API, and that's why you simply should not disable them, them all. That's why if we have and if the hacker will have access to, for example, only help window, uh, he will get access to the file system to read, to the file system to execute, and so on and so on. Uh, about the file delivery, as I mentioned, we had a case when, uh, when USB was prohibited with USB drive, and uh, HTTP and all outcoming requests was, was also prohibited and we cannot uh, go by HTTP, by FTP, by SMB uh, through the windows. But we had a farm manager and the farm manager had a default uh, FTP plugin and this FTP plugin uh, gave us possibility to go through the FTP. Uh, bottom line, in this talk is that uh, a lot of people asked me, uh, is it ATM with Windows XP is less secure than ATM with Windows 7? And my answer always is no, because in, uh, at the most time, uh, in, in, in the most time it's, pro it's a question about the right configuration and wrong configuration, because you can configure Windows 7 wrong or XP right. Uh, we had a project when we have two similar, identically ATMs. Uh, at in the first time, uh, uh, the ATM had uh, Windows XP, and in two weeks uh, they updated to Windows Seven. 
and we bypassed uh, and extracted money from uh, both ATMs at the same time. Now, a little thoughts about the security state of the ATMs. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, ATM vendors uh, gives us encryption between operation system and uh, dispenser. And uh, maybe in next three, four, five, ten years, uh, the whole ATMs will be protected from the black box, finally. Uh, now we want to make a message to the banks, to the ATM vendors, that uh, they still had a lot of problems uh, that they tried to hide through security, through obscurity, uh, hiding all the situation uh, because a lot of banks simply do not know their threat model. Uh, next thing is that you should stop to make your uh, ATM installation uh, compliance list like a, a service engineer give a paper and check uh, here is I pressed, here is I pressed, here is disable, yeah that's all. Uh, you have to use some compliance tool, uh, compliance management tool, which uh, make all this automatically without any errors. And finally, we met a lot of cases when uh, the bank simply cannot disable his vulnerable service from the ATM because it costs a lot, I don't know because why, because they have a legacy, no matter. Uh, in this case, we always recommend to use some uh, mitigation measures measures like uh, using SIEM, like controlling uh, security events, and that's all. So, I would like to say thanks to my <laughs> uh, anonymous friend from the ATM vendor, uh, which helps me to maintain all this stuff. Uh, I would like to say thanks our uh, SCADA team, our reverse engineering team for the uh, all these zero days that uh, was awesome. And to, of course, to my banking security department. Thank you. Any questions? Hello. Anybody? Thank you. Okay, thank you.